Hey guys, welcome back. So, with the return of the Flood on the Ark, the impact this has on the story is going to be very likely astronomical. So, today I wanted to discuss a theory a bunch of the guys from the Halo Archive devised, part of which I've made many, many videos about before, about how their return now perfectly slots into the plan that was set in motion by the Precursors hundreds of millions of years ago. The plan to test humanity when they were at their peak to see if they truly were sufficient to hold the mantle of responsibility. I just want to reiterate real quick that not all of this is my own theorizing. I've definitely added a few of my own thoughts and ideas, but massive credit goes to the guys at the archive who devised a majority of it. Okay, so with all this in mind, let's get into the theory. So, this theory starts way back when the Flood first broke containment on Installation 05 around 97,000 BC, thanks to the Monitor of the Ring being really negligent in its containment protocols. Over the years, the flood that broke out began infecting the wildlife and biological organisms on the Ring, eventually creating a proto-grave mind, which then evolved into the grave mind that we all know and, if you're like me, love. <laughs> As the grave mind grew, both physically and in its intelligence, it began to prepare the plans to eventually escape the ring and muster a flood force big enough to act as humanity's test for the mantle, first prophesized by the Primordial during the Forerunner Flood War. After almost 100,000 years, we get to the events of Halo 2, and this is where things really start to kick into overdrive. The Gravemind uses its flood to commandeer the UNSC in Amberclad and teleports the ship into High Charity in a bet to infect and take over the Covenant's holy city. The reason it wants to do so is that it kills two birds with one stone. It puts a stop to the Covenant, who want to fire the rings, which would of course kill the entire flood force that this Gravemind just spent the best part of thousands of millennia forming and also gives it a bigger, but more importantly, a mobile base of operations. It gives it a means to travel to the two significant locations in the galaxy, the Ark and Earth. The reason the Ark is so important is because the Grave Mind effectively wants to confiscate it, if you will. So there's not a repeat of the Fallen of Flood War, where the entire Halo Array is activated by the Ark and destroys the entirety of the Flood. Earth is so important because, well, I mean, it's humanity's homeworld. What's not important about that? However, when the Grave Mind is assimilating High Charity, it finds Cortana, a hyper-intelligent smart AI, the key to humanity's survival as a species, just left alone in the city, and it realises that it can repeat what the Primordial did to Mendicant Bias, turn the enemy's most intelligent, important piece of artificial intelligence on its creators by the means of the Logic Plague. Now, for those who are unaware or new to my channel, the Logic Plague is how the Flood basically infects AI. It's how it infects something that isn't a biological organism. Now, we see the beginning of this in the Halo 2 post credit scene, and more of it in the short story Human Weakness that takes place in between Halo 2 and Halo 3, which tells more about the time that Cortana spent with the Grave Mind on High Charity, and goes into real hyper detail about how he logically tortured her. Eventually, though, it looks as if Cortana is gonna manage to fend off the Gravemind, at least long enough for Chief to rescue her. But the Gravemind's intention was never to outright infect her, rather to plant the seeds of the Logic Plague that would germinate over time. The reason the Gravemind needs to do this is that its flood force that it had, it really wasn't massive, and infecting Cortana with the Logic Plague acted as sort of an insurance policy in that if the main plan failed, the plan B would ultimately kick in some years down the line. Throughout Halo 3, Cortana begins getting more and more rampant, a subtle little hint to which is in the name of the first chapter of Cortana, Rampant. While this was all happening, High Charity was taken to Mars just after the portal to the Ark at Voy was opened, and was teleported to the Ark not using the portal at Voy, but instead using the city's power combined with the precursor modifications that the Grave Mind had made to it to just do a very simple slip space jump all the way from Mars to the Ark. When High Charity arrived at the Ark, the Flood didn't manage to gain control of it, 
but they did succeed in stopping Truth from annihilating them all. Chief then goes to High Charity, rescues Cortana in air quotes, and burns the city down. Then, on Installation 04B, the Gravemind sent what is supposedly all that remains of High Charity's Flood down to the ring in Flood Dispersal Pods to stop Chief from activating it. However, as we know, this was not exactly successful, and Chief activated Installation 04B, and when he's leaving the ring, the Gravemind says something very, very interesting. Resignation is my virtue. Like water, I ebb and flow. Defeat is simply the addition of time to a sentence I never deserved, but you imposed. The fact that defeat isn't the end, rather just an addition of time to a sentence, a sentence of waiting and reforming a flood horde, proves that Halo 3 was never really the end of the Gravemind, nor the flood. However, the Gravemind actually didn't send the entirety of High Charity's flood to the Ark. It actually had a very substantial flood force stowed away within the parts of the city that remained undestroyed, hidden and waiting for the right time to re-emerge, all while confident in its backup plan of Cortana having the Logic Plague, which will later have a much better chance of administering the test to humanity than this current Flood Force. Now, what's interesting about this theory, and something that I really love about it, is that even though Chief and Arbiter seem to destroy the Flood when they fire the partly built ring, there's actually still two of the Flood's plans ticking away in the background, still set in motion, the Flood remaining on High Charity, and also Cortana. Anyways though, back to it. Mendic and Bias, who was on the Ark and also communicating with Chief via the terminals, and, as we know, was the reason that Chief made it off the ring alive, and thus betrayed the Flood and atoned for its sins, knows the Gravemind's plans, and sent Chief's Half of the Dawn to Requiem, in an attempt to reawaken the Didact for a better chance at passing the test. This was done on the assumption that the Didact was cured of his logic plea, given to him by the Primordial, thanks to the millennia that he spent in the Cryptum talking to the Domain, but as we know, thanks to the events of Halo 4, the Didact most certainly was not cured of his logic plea. Meanwhile, back at the remains of High Charity, the Flood there spent seven years assimilating the wildlife on the Ark, building up biomass, and overall just getting stronger and more intelligent, all while remaining silent and hidden. During these seven years, the Cortana plan seems to be working pretty damn effectively. She goes rampant, then supposedly finds the domain which cures her rampancy, but in doing so, puts her in an infinite state of Logic Plague. Reason being, the Logic Plague was triggered when she went rampant, but now she has infinite life and she's gotten past this stage of rampancy. She's technically infected forever. We then get to the events of Halo 5, and Cortana has near total control of the galaxy using the Guardians, and absolute total control of the Domain. Let me just stress this again. Cortana, a puppet of the Flood, has total control of the galaxy and the domain, and thus, so do the Flood. This means that the Flood and possibly the Gravemind hiding in the ruins of High Charity can infect the entire domain with the Logic Plague, which will then infect every single AI that sided with Cortana at the end of Halo 5 and makes each and every one of those AIs a puppet for the Flood. With everything going to plan for the Flood, a few months after Halo 5, the Banished arrived on the Ark, wanting to take control of it, but were totally ignorant to the fact that the Flood are on the Ark as well, trying to do exactly the same thing. To remain hidden, the Gravemind used its precursor knowledge and capabilities to pull the Spirit of Fire through Slip Space and defeat the Banished on the Ark, and then, sort of as a byproduct, lay another veil of camouflage over the Flood that were hiding within High Charity's remains. This also gives us a nice little explanation as to how the Spirit of Fire somehow managed to get to the Ark in Halo Wars 2, something that we still don't know the answer to. However, during the Banished and UNSC skirmishes, the Banished go looking for something on the Ark that can give them an ultra upper hand, and in doing so, they stumble across the Flood within High Charity and end up releasing them. And this brings us up to Awakening the Nightmare, but what are the Flood's plans after this? 
Well, now there's two sizable forces fighting on the Ark, it's likely the Flood will begin to spread and try and infect the bulk of these forces and use this new army they've got on the Ark to finally gain control of it and establish it as a sort of safe zone. Then, possibly in Halo 6 at some point, they'll begin spreading throughout the galaxy, which of course is currently under Cortana and the Creator's control, and is totally powerless to do anything thanks to the Creator and the Guardians. And then, the Flood will begin the final test, at a time when humanity are most ripe, and either bring an end to all life as we know it, or give the human race the biggest galactic privilege, the mantle of responsibility. So that's it for this long and fantastically detailed theory. With Awakening the Nightmare, along with the created control in the galaxy, and also the arc in play again, it really feels like Halo 6 will be the convergence point of all of these storylines and all these plans set in motion by the Gravemind. The convergence point that results in the final test for the mantle. Thanks a lot for watching guys, don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this theory in the comments, it is a crazy detailed theory, but honestly, right now, I genuinely believe that this is what is going on, and I seriously, seriously hope this is what happens. Thanks again for watching guys, I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.